Some 10,000 young men compete at the highest level. Only 24 are accorded the ultimate honor. It is the oldest and most respected achievement in college football. Selection by the coaches as the very best. The 1986 All-America football team. begins with a ball, a hand, and a crunch of body. As every coach knows, the key to a successful game plan is the offensive line. And these young men, who average 283 pounds per man, are the best at their position in college football. At center is Ben Tamborello, number 55. Auburn senior who is academic all southeastern. They call him Tambo, as in Rambo. Pittsburgh's Randy Dixon controls his opponent, following in the steps of another Panther great, All-American Bill Fraley. Arizona State junior Randall McDaniel opens the holes and the Sun Devils race to their first Pac-10 title and Rose Bowl berth in school history. Number 72 is Jumbo John Elliott. Six foot seven, 306 pounds, and a major reason Michigan also won a coveted spot in the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Southern Cal's Jeff Briegel is the first offensive lineman to start every Trojan game for four straight seasons since the early 1940s. A National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame scholar athlete, Briegel is the only repeat performer on the coach's All-America offensive line. Vic Rowan, the head football coach at San Francisco State University and president of the American Football Coaches Association. Each young man you're watching in action has been studied many times by many coaches. We evaluate their ability and grade their performance. By the time we've analyzed thousands of miles of film, we feel pretty confident that these are the best at their position. They make up the All-American football team. Fans everywhere love the defense, where every game starts with a message, man to man. On the first play, just try to knock his block off and just tell him, hey, baby, it's going to be like this all day. Miami's Jerome Brown, as quick, strong, and mean as any defensive lineman in America. Brown is the rugged catalyst of a Miami team that has lost only one regular season game in two years. At Brigham Young, fans have picked up the chant, The Buck Stops Here, in reference to game stopper Jason Buck. A quarterback in high school, Buck decided he'd rather hit than be hit. And now is the first BYU defensive player ever to be named Kodak All-America. His coach says he is better than Lawrence Taylor. He is Cornelius Bennett, 
Alabama's impact player. He attacks from all directions and usually finds his target. He says he would like to play tight end, and there are many quarterbacks who wish he did. Nebraska's Danny Noonan went from 235 pounds as a freshman to 280 as a senior. He eats eight to 10 meals a day. With enormous strength, he controls the line of scrimmage and according to his coaches, is the best nose guard ever to wear Cornhusker red. Jane Conlon, the latest in a long line of defensive greats, to come out of Penn State. To myself, I just want to play every, every play better than the play before, and I just try to get better each play. You make a tackle for a loss or something, it doesn't really, unless you really nail them, I don't feel that great, you know, about it. says, well, I could have, you know, put my helmet someplace else where, you know, put it right on his chest instead of, like, arm tackling. In 1986, Penn State completed its second consecutive undefeated regular season, a tribute to the defensive leadership of senior Shane Conlon. He's been called another Dick Butkus and just about everything else by students on the Oklahoma campus. Brian Bosworth, the baddest man alive. Awesome, tough, and mean. I think he's a really nice guy. Very big, a rainbow. Outrageous. He's just sort of a children's idol. Pretty wild. His hair being a little short and having stripes down the side. Contrast, he's mean, but he does a lot of good things. I think he's cool, oh, he's neat. He's good for our team. I stay in my own little world. It's like I have tunnel vision and I really can't see what, what's around me or what's, uh, what's happening uh, behind me or anything like that. Uh, um, I see only what my eyes see and I don't pay attention to, to people uh, around me. I don't have any friends on, on uh, the defensive side of the ball and, you know, I don't have any friends on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, it's a war and we're a bunch of gladiators out there trying to do uh, what our instincts tell us to. As one coach says, Bosworth is out there headhunting and he finds a lot of heads. An academic all big eight, Bosworth says a degree is vitally important, but so is winning. And the leader of college football's top defense is the man they call the Wizard of Boz. Joining Brian Bosworth as an All-America linebacker is Ohio State's Chris Spielman, number 36, leading tackler in the Big Ten, and a junior who just always seems to be first at the point of attack. Born with an appetite for hitting, Chris Spielman still has one more year to terrorize Big Ten offenses. For three successive years, Terry Mackey, number 67, has led the Air Force Academy in tackles. A big play linebacker, Mackey is the only athlete in Falcon history to be named all-conference in two sports, wrestling and football. In a super season for linebackers, Terry Mackey joins Brian Bosworth and Chris Spielman as the best behind the line.
It's the solo struggle most often watched in college football. The air war between a clever receiver and his adversary, the defensive back. First, the coach's choice as the top receivers of 1986. Often compared to former Kodak All-American Lynn Swan, Ohio State wide receiver Chris Carter is the most feared deep threat in college football. Carter has caught more passes for more yards and more touchdowns in a season than any Buckeye ever. And with another year to play, he is already Ohio State's career reception leader. Keith Jackson is the best tight end that has played in the Big 8 Conference in my 21 years that I've coached in this league. He has what we call some magic about him. He has great big play ability. He's probably caught more long touchdown passes than any player in this league, and obviously he has probably got the best rushing average of any tight end that's ever played with the, his ability to run the tight end reverse. He has been a great leader and a great inspiration for our football team. We don't throw the ball this much here at Oklahoma, so my job is to uh, be a skilled position, but yet be a great blocker, and uh, that's hard. Number 88, with the size to block like a bulldozer, and the speed to race under a ball like a jet. Good reasons why Keith Jackson is the top tight end in college football. The Wolverines of Michigan take pride in stopping anyone who dreams of throwing against them. And turning those dreams into a nightmare is number 13, Garland Rivers. A three-year starter, Rivers is the heart and soul of the Michigan secondary. Baylor's Thomas Everett was a high school tailback, too short and too light to run in college. So he learned to hit. Gifted with a marvelous instinct for the game, Thomas Everett is a repeat performer on the Kodak All-American team. I want a receiver to feel it when I hit him, says Southern Cal's Tim McDonald. A senior who hopes to break into sports broadcasting, McDonald communicates on the field with quick reactions and an ability to turn a game around. At USC, the Big Mac attack is any time number six searches out a man with a football. Tim McDonald dominates an offense, clinching a berth in the coach's All-American Secondary. The place kicker on this year's team is Jeff Ward. And the punter is Greg Horn. Horn, a senior from Arkansas, shattered the season punting average record for the Southwest Conference, topping the old record held by Russell Ertzleben. 16 of Greg Horn's kicks have traveled over 50 yards, and four of them have topped 60 yards. He is the most consistent punter in college football. Senior Jeff Ward is a career field goal leader in Southwest Conference history. His kicks have provided the margin of victory in nearly 50% of Texas victories during his career, 
as he did in the SMU game. Jeff Ward, a place kicker who wins big games. The excitement of a game-winning play. The pageantry and fun. The splendor of an autumn Saturday. All a part of college football and all set the scene for the sports front page heroes. The passers and the long distance runners. At Stanford, runners don't normally rate the same headlines as quarterbacks. But junior Brad Muster, number 25, is smashing that tradition. Muster not only finds holes, he makes them, projecting himself into the secondary and running through defenders. An economics major and candidate for Pac-10 All Academic Honors, Muster is the driving force behind Stanford's invitation to the Gator Bowl and a very successful season. The nation's leading rusher wears number six, attends Temple University, and answers to the name Boo Boo. It kind of came from uh, Yogi Bear's little, little pal Boo Boo, but I like to think it was a cute name for a cute kid. <laughs> to the defense, Paul Palmer is more than a cute kid. He's durable, determined, quick, and more than willing to work for his success. Ever since Paul's been here, I can never remember him having a bad practice. I think he has that drive to prove that he can be the best. The best on the ground in college football. Palmer's all-purpose yardage in 1986, running, receiving, and kick returns was higher than anyone who ever played the game. Proud owner of 23 Temple offensive records, Palmer is Mr. Everything to the Owls attack. A lot of people don't think that I can do this and do that, and by the end of the game, they realize that I can. They pitch the ball back to Palmer. He may throw it. Throws out of the bone. He lobs a high pass to Marshall. Marshall makes a great catch and tumbles into the end zone for a touchdown on fourth and two. Third and goal on the one. They've eaten up a lot of time. Here's the dive by Palmer over the top, and he scores. Palmer for the touchdown from the one-yard line. Paul Palmer finishes his Temple career as the sixth all-time rusher in NCAA history. And that puts him in some pretty esteemed company. He followed a legend at Auburn, and following a legend is not easy. When asked to compare 1985 Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson with senior Brett Fullwood, Auburn coach Pat Dye answered, Bo's an outfielder, Brent's a running back. One coach described him this way, number 22 runs like his feet are on fire. Gymnastics training as a young boy helped embellish a style of running often compared to former pro Chuck Foreman. Brent Fullwood waited his turn while Bo Jackson gained national fame, never doubted his ability, and now ranks as the most prolific game breaker in college football and a solid choice for the coaches all-America backfield.
When Miami quarterback Vinny Testaverde puts his right arm to work, it's poetry in motion. He's a legend like old Davy Crockett. He always stands tall in the pocket. You needn't be wordy in praise of Testaverde. Just, Just call, call him the Miami, Miami Rocket. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 10, 9. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 5, 4, 3, 2. Ignition sequence starts. 1. Testaverde is the third consecutive super passer to guide the Hurricanes, surpassing the amazing exploits of Jim Kelly and Bernie Kosar. Because of the time that Benny had to sit on the bench and, and really kind of wait until his time came uh, to pass to where he could go and play as a starter, uh, probably gave him the discipline to be a really a team-oriented person. He's able to control the ball game with his mind as well as his physical ability. He's able to put us in the right formation and call the right play and, and check the, the play at the line of scrimmage. And so he is a complete football player, both mentally and physically. I don't feel any pressure because everybody is talking so highly of you and your teammates are talking great about you and you're winning. So there is no pressure. Uh, I guess if you were losing and, and people weren't saying uh, as nice of things as they are, then that's where the pressure comes in. You know, when I throw a touchdown, I feel a little emotional. For the most part, I have to stay pretty calm and stay, keep my head in the game where everybody else can go ahead and jump around. Uh, but I, I feel a quarterback has to be in control. In two years under Testaverde, Miami has lost but one regular season game. Many believe he is college football's most talented all-round field general in recent years, and certainly a unanimous choice as the 1986 All-American quarterback. You have just seen the finest collegiate football players of 1986. Once again, the defense. The offense. We coaches are proud of the accomplishments of these young men. Each has proved himself worthy of the honor of All-American.